Gautam, thank you very much for joining us about this story. You've been, uh, you've been delving into the science behind this breakthrough. D tell us about it. Yes, uh, in brief, it's been possible for people who've suffered a very debilitating stroke to actually control, in a controlled setting, a robotic arm merely with their thoughts. And by doing so, they've been able to manipulate and pick up objects, which is quite a breakthrough. This, this is a huge breakthrough. This must give hope to so many people who, who are completely paralyzed. Yes, I should emphasize, though, that this is at the very early stages of development. It's going to be many, many years before this ever sees the light of day as a commercial product, if it ever gets that far. Having said that, the scientific breakthrough here is quite significant. Essentially, we're talking about patients who have lost complete control of their arms and legs. They're completely immobile. At the same time, they're not able to speak. So they're truly debilitated. And so to be able to channel their thoughts and control a robotic arm is a very crucial first step towards developing this technology. This sounds huge. I mean, it must be um, quite, quite, quite liberating for, for the people involved. Did you get the chance to um, communicate with anyone about this? Uh, well, I spoke to the wife of one of the stroke patients who happened to be a, a managing editor of a newspaper in Connecticut, and uh, he one day was doing a piano recital and minutes after that collapsed from a stroke and went into a coma. And one of the things he was able to do through these experiments was, uh, with the help of these scientists, was to manipulate a robotic arm very slowly, but eventually is able to pick up foam objects, which is not as easy as it seems. We take it for granted because we do it without thinking, but our brain and the kind of connections and the uh, complicated algorithm it process processes to pick up a simple object like a book is very, very sophisticated. So uh, this completely warms my heart, but I understand that it takes an implant into the brain. Ex explain explain the, the science behind that. What's going on? Yeah, so the first thing that these scientists did was they took an uh, implant, which is essentially a chip, tiny size of a you know aspirin and it has 96 tiny electrodes and they put it in the motor cortex which is the part of the brain that controls voluntary movement and then these scientists moved a robotic arm in different ways and they recorded what the patient's neurons in the motor cortex were doing later on so that way they created an entire pattern of different movements later on they connected the patient directly to the robotic arm and they told the patient okay now think about moving your arm left. And the patient thought about it just as if they had their own arm that was working, which isn't. And in that case, the robotic arm actually moved left. They said, okay, move it up, and it moved up. And it takes a little bit of practice to master this, but they were able to do that. And then they were able to manipulate this robotic arm with their thoughts alone in a 3D configuration, clench and unclench the robotic arm's fingers, pick up these objects. And the most remarkable thing was that the second patient, a woman, was able to take a sip of coffee, uh, take, uh, take a bottle of coffee, bring it towards her, tilt it upwards, take a sip through a straw, and put the bottle back with the robotic arm, controlled entirely through her thoughts. This is awesome. Thank you very much. We have to leave it there. Gautam Nike staying up late in London. We really appreciate it.